record. Yeah, I'm recording. Okay, so um, one of the things is um, which I got uh, was shared to me by Dr. David R. Hawkins, and is, I, I utilize in my own experience, and that is the thing of being willing to put down all my addictions and distractions in the order in which they are, they are um, creating repressed feelings within me. And, and the one thing that uh, I was told, and I kind of, it was so enlightening, because I'm in rooms with 12-step uh, recovery rooms with addicts, and there's this thing in the rooms which is like, don't use and just feel your feelings. But what I was told was enlightening, which is that if you let go of all your addictions and feel all the repressed feelings that are underneath everything that I do to distract or to escape my feelings, they're finite and they'll eventually come to an end. So I can just, I just have to feel them all out. It's not like endless. I mean, there's no point in me feeling my grief or feeling my anger or my shame or my rage or whatever's under the hood. And so, and I kind of like, it was so hopeful uh, and I heard it and I go, well, of course I had to put down the food first and had panic attacks, which I've shared in other videos. Uh, felt like I was dying, but uh, had the willingness to be willing to die for the love of God. And then um, the panic attack stopped and, and I experienced that actually they're illusions, you know, feel, feel the panic, feel like you're dying and then it disappears on the other side. And uh, there's a huge, um, reducing of the level of the ego. It's like one has just released something I used to distract. So there was food, um, there's uh, TV, there's drama, um, you know, so all of those things. And I go, well, I just have to find what's, you know, I, another one I did, which was actually quite interesting, was um, around shopping and buying things. Just I'm feeling bored, let me just buy something. And I just like, well, I knew that, you know, if I just, <clears throat> the reason that my ego is so ferocious, and I knew that, and he said this, and I, I did this in my experience, <clears throat> that if to the level that I've got repressed feelings, the, um, the thinking of the ego tends to be more uh, negative and tends to be more ferocious and more addictive. So it's like, if I've got too many repressed feelings I haven't released, and allowed to come up and dissipate in, into grace, then the ego tends, it tends to be hard to let go of the, uh, the speed of the thoughts and the negativity of the thoughts, which are cor correlated to the level of <clears throat> repressed feelings still under the hood. Like, for example, if I haven't felt my shame and grief out because I'm eating donuts, watching TV, and um, I'm just shopping every day just to distract myself, to escape not feeling out all the shame and guilt. Then um, if I let go of my, big, my first biggest addiction that I'm distracting from my feelings and say I put down the donuts and the, and the treats and the chocolates, then it's like, you know, I have to go through the withdrawal, extreme feelings coming up that were hidden by my, my, me doing this addictive behavior. Uh, that was panic attacks. And then it's like, actually my thoughts I had this thing in the early days when I was just allowing the feelings to come up and be with them until they dissipated and not use, say, food on them. And I remember um, one day, it was like my whole life, um, I'd, I didn't know it, but I'd been, I had this blanket of fear my whole life. And, I, and I, that was just natural for me, this huge sort of blank, I call it blanket of fear, because one day, it was so miraculous, it was like someone removed my blanket of fear. And it was so profound that it felt like, oh, but I never knew that I was living in a blanket of fear all the time. That's what it, that's how I describe it. It was like a huge, there was a huge level of freedom and happiness and joy that I'd never ever experienced and known was possible for me. So as I started to do the spiritual practice, especially putting down addictions, it was like a huge layer that was <clears throat> creating density to my ego. I was I mean, quite a few, 12-step groups, um, there's ones for money and spending, there's ones for food, there's ones for relationships, so get, you know, trying to get validation of others. So there's various ones out there, and, uh, and just putting them down and then just being willing to go through the feelings coming up until, they, until they're fully emptied out. 
uh, what I found with the food was that when I, um, when I, you know, I knew just to have no payoff, don't eat anything which my ego wants to eat, just the nutritious balanced meals, which are bland and boring. There's nothing there for my ego. So all the feelings came up. Uh, that took about two years for different tranches of feelings to come up that were hidden by the food. And then, um, and then essentially for the last 10 years, there's been neutrality around food. I just don't think about it. It's like a nothing. So those repressed feelings that were under the hood of say the food, it's like your one's catapulted into a much more happier and present place. And the thoughts are much less negative. And the feeling of negativity is extremely reduced after the food. Then there was the um, the shopping addiction was really interesting. It was like the way I did that, because I saw the addictive things my ego wants to do in the world to escape feelings and not be. With... So every time I stopped something, a, a crunch of feelings would come up. So one of the things with the addictive thing, like uh, shopping and buying things on Amazon, for example, feeling bored, like what can I buy? Uh, or uh, looking up supplements or whatever it is, um, was that, okay, every time I wanted to buy something it's like a craving it's like my ego says i want to buy something i want to do something that gives me a, a hit a high some escape from from the monotony of life so i'll go nope won't buy it today i'm just going to sit with this urge to buy something to treat my ego until it's gone so i do that and what would happen was okay maybe tomorrow i might buy it but i'm not buying it today see how I feel about it. I'm going to fill out all the feelings of wanting to buy something. And the next day, I might want to buy it. And then I'll just sit with it, going, not buying it today. Just sit with the feelings. What, why your ego is trying to distract on buying something today. And do that. And then within about probably a week or two, what I'd find when I was doing this practice was that I wasn't bothered to buy that thing any longer, which seems so like such a treat, like I'm going to buy this gadget or whatever. It's not needed, actually. And so what would happen is my levels uh, of consciousness would, would increase, whereby it's not, there's not, it's not needed from the world for me to buy that thing. It's seen differently in a different light. And you go, had no idea why I wanted to buy that a few days ago and why it seems so important. It's like, I, I just don't need it any longer. And it is just gone. So I did, and I knew I, was, I had to do that every time it came up. And what I found by doing that is I need less and less things from the world <clears throat> by doing it. I don't need to buy the next gadget or the next um, or the need to buy the next vitamin, look up the next vitamin pill. So <clears throat> so um, this thing of the viciousness of the ego and feelings of negativity and and is there and I'll just say if there is, <clears throat> is there something I could put down? <clears throat> which is stopping me from all the feelings coming up. It could be, um, am I having too many donuts today? Um, am I um, uh, food addiction? Am I trying to distract with shopping? Um, am I looking to get validation from humans to treat my ego? <clears throat> so can I let that go and have the feelings come up or let the donuts go or let the shopping, or is it like I'm addicted to negative news? Uh, or, or um, what is it? What do they call them? Conspiracy theories. Um, there might be. There's quite a few of those. I think. You know, when I'm speaking to people nowadays, like, did you know this? Did you know that? <clears throat> did you know these? This group of people doing that. So it's very exciting for the ego, and then to want to go and research and and find out more negativity. But you know, the imprinting of neg negative beliefs from others is to like keep the consciousness pristine. Okay. 